Hello everyone, we are from Faculty of Economics and Business, University of Lampung. We are students of Human Research Management class studying in their third semester. We are Group 7. My name is Olinda Kalistayatri. And my name is Fatima Azahra. And with our lecturer, Dr. Nova Mariana, SEMM. In this video, we would like to discuss about recognizing employee contributions with pay. How does pay influence individual employees? Reinforcement Theory The implications for compensations management is that high employee performance followed by a monetary reward will make future high performance more likely. By the same token, high performance not followed by a reward will make it less likely in the future. The theory emphasized the importance of a person's actual experience of a reward. Expectancy Theory the theory that says motivation is a function of balance, instrumentality, and expectancy. Agency theory. This theory focuses on the divergence interests and goals of the organization's stakeholders and the ways that employee compensations can be used to align these interests and goals. We cover agency theory in some depth because it provides especially relevant implications for compensation design. Pay for performance programs. Three design features. First, payment method. Second, frequency of payout. Third, ways of measuring performance. Potential consequence of such program for performance motivations of employees, attraction of employees, organization's culture, and cost. Finally, there are two contingencies that may influence whether each pay program fits the situations. First, management style, and second, type of work. Merit pay. The advantage of merit pay are first, communications company objectives, second, let employee know where they stand, third, it's in employee retentions. And this advantage of merit pay are first, concern about poverty, second, uses time and resources better spent elsewhere, third, communications trouble, individual incentives. There are some advantages and disadvantages for individual incentives. The advantages are First, employees are individually motivated for a higher level of performance. Second, organizational ability will increase. Third, greater job satisfaction and organizational productivity. Fourth, reduces organizational expenses. Fifth, can be easily administered and applied. The disadvantages are First, employee give less importance to quality. Second, goal conflict occurs. Third, the quality of work life is reduced. Fifth, the living standard of employees will be uncertain. Fifth, doesn't promote teamwork. Sixth, bonuses are not directly linked to the performance. Profit sharing and ownership. The advantages are First, being employees together to work to a common goal. Second, motivation level of the employees are high. Third, the employees focus on profitability. Fourth, increases commitment. Fifth, bridges the gap between employees and employer. Sixth, promotes the well-being of employees. The disadvantages are First, salaries of individual employees go up equally. Second, may affect personal earnings of the employees. Third, employees' focus is more on the profit rather than quality. Fourth, people get their share of profit regardless of their contributions. Gene sharing, group incentives, and team awards. The advantages are first, enhanced group work. Second, helps to enhance team spirit. Third, Encourages a sense of corporations and responsibility. Fourth, encourages employee participation. And the disadvantages are First, no reward is solely on individuals on reward. Second, individual job performance will not be improved. Third, conflict and disagreements may be seen in the workplace among teammates. Fourth, the problem of self deceptions can occur. Program. Some companies find it useful to design a mix of pay programs. 
one that has just the right chemistry for the situation at hand. One approach that seeks to balance multiple objectives is the balance scorecard, which Kaplan and Norton describe as a way for companies to track financial results while simultaneously monitoring progress in building the capabilities and acquiring the intangible assets they will need for future growth. Because of their significant ability to influence organization performance, top managers and executives are a strategically important group whose compensation warrants special attention, including its competitiveness in the labor market. Business magazines often publish lists of top executives who did the most for their pay and those who did the least. There is pressure from regulators and shareholders to better link pay and performance. The Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC requires companies to report compensation levels for the five highest paid executives and the company's performance relative to that of competitors over a five-year period. Regulators in a number of countries have also sought to limit the size of bonus payments in the hope of reducing the incentive to engage in behaviors. Large retirement fund investors have proposed guidelines to better ensure that boards of directors act in shareholders' best interest when making executive pay decisions rather than being beholden to management. Employee Participation in Decision Making Involvement in the design and implementation of pay policies has been linked to higher pay satisfaction and job satisfaction, presumably because employees have a better understanding of and greater commitment to the policy when they are involved. The delegation of decision-making by a principal to an agent creates agency costs because employees may not act in the best interest of top management. On the other hand, monitoring will be less costly and more effective if performed by employees because they have knowledge about the workplace and behavior of fellow employees that managers do not have. Communication In making any changes, it is crucial to determine how best to communicate reasons for the changes to employees. However, most pay-related communications come through individual discussions with one supervisor still ahead of the company website, email, and discussions with the Human Resource Department. Pay and Process Treats process issues such as participation as factors that may facilitate the success of pay programs. A study reported that productivity and profitability were both enhanced by the addition of employee participation in decisions. The decision follows a growth strategy or a concentration strategy. This table provides some suggested measures. Basically, a growth strategy's emphasis on innovation, risk-taking, and new markets is linked to a pay strategy that shares risk with employees, but also gives them the opportunity for high future earnings by having them share in whatever success the organization has. Thank you for your attention and thank you for watching our video. Bye!